Hey, James, how are you? Oh, you're on mute. Sorry. Sorry about that. Doing good. How you doing? I'm good. Let me just try to fix my camera here. Is Christ, I'm knee deep in technology here. It's so fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, no worries. I would have been on just a little bit sooner, but may have a small plumbing emergency at my house. But my contractor's here, so he's taking a look at it right now. So no worries. If you need to take a minute, I've got plenty of time. I think we're good. I think I think it was just people people thought there was water leaking downstairs from an upstairs bathroom, but I don't I don't think that's what it is. I think it was just they 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 just hurt the pipes. <laughs> so they're looking nice. at it. Yeah, I, th I think we're good. Um, well. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, I guess first things first, let me just give you a quick introduction of who I am. I'm James Payton. Um, I don't, I'm not a full-time employee of GI Jobs. <laughs> I'm a freelance writer for, um, for the publication. Um, I'm actually a information security analyst for iHeartMedia. So, um, oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So, so but, but, but did a little business with iHeartMedia. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we're everywhere. It seems <laughs> you are. So yeah, so that's that's my daytime job, but I, on the side I write for GI Jobs. I've been doing that for for about a year um, consistently, and then I did a little bit of work for a couple years back um, with them. But um, but yeah, that's me in a nutshell. I'm a veteran. Um, I did ten years between the Army and the National Guard of Service. Uh, so that's that's me in a nutshell. Basically, what we want to do here is we want to get some insider knowledge, <laughs> pretty much, because what's sure. happening. Service members are, are coming to these virtual career fairs and they're not prepared, at least in, in the experience of GI Jobs and Victory, their parent company, whenever they put on these virtual events, they're noticing that service members are not as prepared as they probably should be. So we wanna you know, put out a good, a good lengthy article to, to help them understand what they need to do when they arrive to these events because um, we put out an article, I actually wrote a, a listicle for this month's um, this month's uh, publication that gives a quick down and dirty of what you should do before. So now sure. we wanna dive into, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, from your perspective, what, what someone can do before, but we wanna dive really into when they arrive on, into a virtual career event, um, what, what do they need to do once they get there? So, uh, so the good news is, and correct me if I'm wrong, James, I can, be, I can be legit in this. This is not being taped, recorded, video. It is being recorded. That's, that's what I was getting ready to say next. Okay. So it's being recorded, I'll tell you why, because, and this was new to me, um, GI Jobs is going to do a lot more video content this year, um, sure. along with their, with the, with the magazine, they're trying to up their, their video content. So, um, so I would say, uh, give us the insider knowledge, but uh, I guess temper it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah I, I can, I, I can do that and you can, <laughs> try to redirect me on the fly. I'm a fairly <laughs> filterless, transparent guy. That's my okay. military coming out. Oh, okay. I'm, where, where, where was you Army, maybe? Or? I was Army as well, yeah. Nice. I was uh, Air Defense. Uh, oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm very accustomed to the useless knowledge the Army gave me when I transitioned <laughs> out. <laughs> oh, my. So am I. So that's why, and that's why we're here doing this. So yeah, and I, I'll tell you, I, I, you know, I've been now. I've been. I'm, I mean, Christ, I got out in '94, so I was part of the whole Desert Storm mm -hmm. Round One old guy trip. But um, <laughs> when when I got out, I was uh, in my in my head. I'm thinking, you know, shit. I got four years of military. I did my tour. I've been to yep. Europe. I've been back. This is great. I got some mad skills. And the army goes, yeah, no, you got nothing. Oh, sweet. Okay. Uh, and, and that was, you know, long before tap was what it was and yep. the transitioning soldier was, was it is. And the, and the, the one that drives me, you know, batshit quite honestly, <laughs> the most is the, the, we need to hire a veteran, right? It's the buzzword of today. And, uh, and, and don't get me wrong. I think that's fantastic. I right. want every veteran to be hired. However, what drives me nuts is, these companies just start tossing people that aren't veterans on veteran hiring, like it's the the, the buzzword of today to hire veterans. Right, right, right. It, it doesn't do the veteran any justice. Right. It it takes someone that has been there to be able to, I, I would say, to be able to recruit properly recruit veterans, because if if, if you don't have someone in, in that wheelhouse uh, that has been there that has done it, 
and they can also recruit, then you, it's kind of, it is a disservice to the service member. Yep. And, and that's, I'll tell you, I, I have traveled around the country and gone to service academy career conferences, military mojo. I've been on umpteen military panels and, and speakers and, and things like this. And the, the common thread that I have used in every one of those is strict 100% transparency and honesty. And, and everybody, every military member has said to me, thank, thank you. Yes. And that's what you deserve. That's what yep. they deserve. And, you know, it, the, the problem is, is today the transitioning service member goes through so much what I'll call, oh, here's a good word, chaff that's just coming at them from every direction of start your own business, go yep. do this, go do that. You know, you've got all these skills and then they get in the real world and find out, wait a minute, nobody owes me anything. Nope. Uh, I got to do this all myself or I got to put up a whole bunch of money and all of a sudden it becomes real and they don't have all of that wonderful support that was promised them or they take the first job and it's completely misled from what it really was. Yep. And they go back into this, this what I call the flounder mm -hmm. uh, of when you transition. You just, should I stay? Should I go? What do I do? Oh my God, it's overwhelming. Yep. It's a lot. Uh, it's a lot coming at you. Like you said, it's it's so much, it's so much to take in. So you don't really know what, okay, what, what do I focus on? Like, okay, do I want to start a business? Well, I don't know. I've never started a business before, but I have all these skills that they say. It's just so much, like you said, it's just chaff and it's just coming exactly. It's just coming at you nonstop. And I have, I have a friend, like uh, she was in my last active duty unit. She was our supply sergeant and she, she's about to retire. And as she was talking about it on Facebook, she was saying like, there's just so much information that I don't really know what to do with any of it. It's, it's, it's overwhelming. So I, I hit her up and I said, hey, just if you need to talk, let me know. I, I, I've been through this. I, I can give you a little bit of insight to kind of help you narrow your focus. Um, because that's what happens. Like, it's just, you can't narrow your focus with all of this information. And, and it's, and most of, like you said, most of it is, let's just say what it is. Most of it's useless. Yep. But even, even if there's something useful in there, it gets lost in the shuffle because of all the other stuff that's coming at you. Yeah, and, I, and I'm convinced that, you know, transitioning vats at one point literally just say to hell with it i'm going to do this yeah just to stop all of the information and just grab something grab something yeah something and maybe it's start your own business and now you're eighty thousand dollars in debt and the business fails yep I, you know you're right back and they say to hell with it i'm going back to the military yep yep it it's it's it, it turns into a vicious vicious cycle we're getting into a, I'm gonna have to interview you for a different article because now we're getting into something else. Like it, we're getting sure. to we're getting into a, a different topic, but it's a, it's not no less important. Um, it's something that definitely needs to be discussed. You know, to I don't know to to kind of help bring home that information that veterans need when they are leaving, not so much what they don't need, but. Absolutely, 100% oh, agree. And, and, and I've said it for years, the one thing that the United States military needs to implement is a mentor program. Absolutely. I say it all the time. I say it all the time. All you have to. I, mean, I, I go back, I, mean, I was a 17-year-old kid. I went in the Army because I was going to just party my life away. Right. And, and the Army did exactly what I needed it to do. I hit the four-year mark. Unfortunately, I got a young lady pregnant, which happens all the time, right? I, I was like that soldier. Sure. I was an E4. I declined the promotion board six times. I worked for an E9 and I declined it because I knew I was getting out. Right. And I ended up running, essentially running from the pregnant girl. Oh my God. You know, it, it's the standard, what I call the military private story. Right. And had I had a good mentor, that I listened to that could have just said, wait a minute, Ross, the best thing you could do right now would be to just stay, stay. right because, where you are. Because sometimes it's not the best idea to get out when you think it's time to get out. I, I, I almost did that same thing. I, I was married my whole military career, but I almost got out after four years and it took my wife saying like, hey, listen, we're not ready. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's scary. And I, I you know, so as a you know, 21 year old kid, I run home. I, I honestly don't don't know up from down, left from right. I don't know what I'm doing. I go home and sit on my butt for four months and don't know what I'm doing because no one's telling me what to do. No one's telling you All the while in the back of my brain, I'm thinking, wait a minute, you're a dad, pal. Yep. 
You got to do something. Dope. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it was, you know, and it was funny because it wasn't until many years later I said, boy, you really should have just stayed. Hey. You should have just stayed where you were. And, you know, had I had that E5, E6, or even my E7, I go back to my E7 at Bragg, who probably would have been the one to slap me around and tell me you're not going anywhere. You're but going anywhere, yep. That's, that's what I needed was that mentor to just put me under their wing and say, hey, you're going to sit right here and your life, everything is going to be fine. Right. And they don't have that. And, and I, I mean, I get it, right? P, P, transitioning military, you make the decision to leave the military and the military essentially, wrong statement, but you'll know what I mean. They turn their back on you. And they yep. shut the door, but yep. but they have to. But right? they have to. They, they got to keep. They got to keep mission. Mission. That's right. right. On mission all the time. We got a, a nation to defend. Yep. You've made a decision to leave. We thank you for what you've done. You go over there and deal with tap and all that fun stuff. We got to go in this direction and defend the country. Yep. Exactly. And I, I get it. And somewhere in that mix needs to be a mentorship program or something. I don't know what it looks like, but I agree. I just think there's a lot of young soldiers out there that really don't know. They, they, they sign up because of course they want to be a seal and they want to jump out of airplanes. Yeah. And, you know, they want to be a green beret and they want to do the cool guys. stuff. <laughs> right. And I love it guys, but until you know what it takes to be one of those people, you, you're going down a path that is just, you know, a small single digit percentage of you are going to make it actually. Yep. Yep. That's, and that's just the reality of it. That's the reality. We're gonna we're we're gonna we're gonna continue this discussion in a different in a different time because I think we're on to something. I think there's 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 a topic here that needs to be discussed that I, I'm gonna discuss it with the editor that we could probably drill down to and sure love to dive, love to. I know and I don't mean to go off on a tangent. Sorry. No, no, about no, 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 no. We're good. We're good because I, I agree with a hundred percent of what you're saying. So I'm gonna talk to the editor and, and I'm gonna kind of get my creative juices flowing and see if there's something there that we can expand on further for a different, um, for a future um, month of the publication. Sure. So let's dive into the virtual career fair part of this. So three tips, if you can offer up three tips to private or specialist or petty officer so-and-so or petty officer whoever, what would be the three tips you would give them as they prepare for a virtual career fair? So I think the, the first one I would prepare is homework, right? You've got to do your homework. So, you know, as you come in and you prepare yourself for this, this virtual career fair is no different on the surface than any other career fair. The only difference is you're not walking into a building and you're not going to be able to shake hands. Um, but you've got to know that the, one of the most important pieces where people fail at career fairs, and I'm going to generalize career fairs versus virtual because... Sure it's the same. They don't do their homework. You know, they come up to me as a recruiter and say, Hey, great. I really want to work for general dynamics. Uh, I want to do this. I see that you have a job in uh, Fairfax, Virginia. Yeah. And I have to look at them and say, uh, I understand, but actually general dynamics has nine subsidiaries underneath <laughs> of it that are located in multiple different areas of the country. And I'm not one of them. Yeah. Right. So I don't have a job in Fairfax because I'm Bath Ironworks and I build Navy destroyers and they, they all of a sudden then look at me with the deer in the headlight. <laughs> oh. um, which the problem with that is, is now you've started this whole conversation off in a negative connotation. Right. And you've got to essentially start to dig yourself out of that hole. Um, and uh, depending on, this is another tip, who are you talking to? Um, you want to know, right? Were they a veteran? Yeah. And, and the reason I say that, because if you know, like me and you, James, we're both veterans of the Army, I almost immediately know what I can say, what I can't say, what's accepted, what's not accepted. And we have our own language and relationship outside of the rest of the world you that, that you and I both know. Yep. yep. So, uh, you know, I would say it's okay to ask if somebody has served or not served or, or if they're a veteran or not a veteran. That's okay. You you as the veteran now know who you're speaking to. And in a virtual environment, it becomes even harder to understand because now nine times out of 10, you're probably chatting with somebody in a text box. Yeah. Uh, if you're lucky, you're having the conversation like we are somewhat yeah. face to face and you can see expressions, et cetera, et cetera. But so I guess that would be another tip is to, is to ensure that you know 
who you're talking to and what is their background. Uh, so now, now you've, you've, you're getting ready to go to a career fair. You've done your homework on a company. You know what positions they have available. You absolutely know who you're talking to. Um, and, and I think that the third, maybe I'm beyond three, I don't know uh, <laughs> as far as tips go, but keep it relatively short. And, and what I mean mm-hmm. by that is a career fair is generally met. And, and if you think about a traditional career fair, you approach the table, you figure out who you're talking to. You've already done your homework on the company, I hope. And now you're, now you're engaging, right? You, you're, you're now starting to converse one-on-one like me and you, or you're, you're chatting. Yeah. The person that you're chatting with potentially could have 50, 60, 70 people queued up waiting to talk to them. Yep. So they've got a very short amount of time to understand <laughs> you, who you are, what you're about, and then leave it in a somewhat positive manner to move on. Now, the disjustice to that is, is that you as the candidate want to spend as much time as you can because you feel that they're the hiring manager. <laughs> 99% of the time, they're not. They're a recruiter. They're a, they're a HR generalist or they're just somebody that said, hey, I'll, I'll sit in the seat right now and handle yep. this career fair and, and talk to people. Yep. I'm taking notes as, you, as you're saying this. No, no worries at all. <laughs> because uh, you said a lot of good stuff there. You know, recruiters are not hiring managers. And that's, that, that is not very apparent to, to veterans as they're leaving. They, they think that whenever they talk to a recruiter that this, per, this is the person that's going to hire me. And that yeah. is absolutely never the case. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. And, and the misnomer is, is, is us as veterans hear the word recruiter and you flash right back to your recruiter. Yep. Who made the decisions getting you into the military and it couldn't be any different, right? A recruiter today versus a recruiter in the military, two completely different jobs. Right. Um, you know, one is handed leads. The other has to go find his leads. Yep. And the, but to your point, we are traditionally a gatekeeper, right? Yep. We're as a recruiter. We're the gatekeeper between the candidate and the hiring manager. We can influence your hiring. We can also negatively impact your hiring as well. Um, depending on how, how it goes. Yep. Very important. Very important distinction. So, yeah, because generally we're viewed as, uh, I mean, the recruiter generally is the hiring manager's ally. Yes. Yes, very much. Very much. They're kind of their, uh, their scout, if you will. Hey, that's exactly right. Yeah, great way to put it. Yeah. So when someone arrives, when they get to a virtual career fair and they, they log in, you know, they, they, they've done the steps that you said to prepare, they've done their homework, they, they know who they're going to be talking to when they, when they get there, what is the first thing they should do when they arrive? So this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to categorize this as question uh, 1.5 before okay. 2. Okay. Uh, so you've done your homework, hopefully, and the, and the other side of this piece of homework is you now need to understand, and this is probably the toughest component, what do you want to do? Yes. Where do you want to go? We, you know, more and more veterans get out today and I hear them say, you know what, my wife is, or, or spouse has put up with me for 20 years. I want to do what they want to do, which is we're going home to Minnesota. We're mm-hmm. going to live in Minneapolis. We're going to work for XYZ company and we're going to live a happy life. Right. Okay, good. So You've just defined your entire job search parameter to Minneapolis, Minnesota. Yes. Only. So you need to understand who <laughs> in this virtual career fair is hiring in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And it's probably a fraction of the entire population. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to say once you've arrived you need to know who you want to talk to the most and get there, right? You're on you're you're essentially in a timeline yeah. You should hopefully know, I want to go talk to, these These are my top four companies, right? Raytheon, Lockheed, General Dynamics, and whoever. Yeah. Well, then start there. Because if you don't start there, you may never get another opportunity to talk to them. Um, so I, I, I would say start at the top with your, your definitely wannabes and get to them and make sure that you're talking to the right, the right people um, during those events 
And don't be afraid that if you're not talking to the right people, i.e. you're chatting with a recruiter, it's okay to ask to talk to somebody else. Ask for another name. Ask for the hiring manager's name. The worst that can happen is they're going to they're gonna tell you they don't have it or they don't know it. Right. Uh, that's okay. Right. You're at least asking. But I, I see a lot of people get overwhelmed by, I don't know how many people are on the career fair list for companies uh, tomorrow, but let's just say it's 50. Mm -hmm. Inside of that 50, you have a certain number that you want to talk to that are maybe it's Amazon, Facebook, Google, whoever it is. Right. Get there first. Go there get first. there as quick as you can. Don't get off. Don't log off without at least talking to the people you want. Now, here's the, the other side of that coin. And I'm kind of rambling a little, but I'm hoping you're going to pull what you need out of yep. this. Yep. Just keep going. I'll pull exactly what I need. You roll into the career fair. And let's just say that uh, I'm going to use Amazon, Google, and Facebook are the top three companies you want to talk to. However, the line at Amazon is, is 60 minutes. Mm-hmm. Do you waste 60 minutes and wait, or do you jump out, go see some other companies and come back? Because what tends to happen, I see this a lot, especially on college campuses, students jump into a line, they stand in that line for two hours. Now they get out of line and, and they're, they've only got an hour left in the career fair. Mm -hmm. And there's four other 400 other companies there that yeah. you now don't have an opportunity to talk to. So you got you got time management, right? Time management is gonna be critical that you talk to, talk to as many companies as you can that are what I'll classify as in your wheelhouse. Don't talk to a company just to talk to a company. Mm -hmm. Unless you come into this, this is kind of a, here's a secret, secret trick that I would say, insider's knowledge. Okay. If you're coming into a virtual career fair, and you are just in this realm of, okay, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I'm nervous. I don't know how to conduct myself. Grab a company that you know you probably aren't going to work for and start talking. Mm, okay. Practice with them, right? And just say, hey, I want to be a project manager for you know, ADT systems. We know you don't want to sell security systems, but at least get that ice barrier off of you. That, that help, it, It's an icebreaker, right? It helps yep. you. At the, who cares if it goes south? Right. You know, ADT isn't going to start texting every other company at the career <laughs> fair. <laughs> but it gives you a chance to kind of hone your skills in the first 20 or 30 minutes. Is, now, tomorrow when I'm true. online, I'm going to be skeptical of the first few guys I talk to. <laughs> <laughs> Such good advice, though, because you can, you can, you can grab, you know, a, I didn't, I didn't necessarily take that route whenever I attended virtual career fairs. I, I pretty much knew, okay, I wanted to talk to X, Y, and Z companies. But that is such a good that is such a good tip to find a company and say, you know what? I'm just going to go talk to them to kind of get my bearings. That's it. And that's that all is, you're doing. And, and there's a portion of that. You have no idea. It could actually work. It could work. It could land you a job. Who knows? At the worst, gonna... at the worst right. you know, they may, they may think you're, you know, they may, they may think not very highly of you, but at the very best outcome is that you could you could actually land. Could That's actually right. Land it can't them. it can't go wrong for you, right? Because you didn't you didn't know them. You probably weren't going to stop by anyway, and then right. all of a sudden you walk away with either a job offer or a, or a hot lead. Yes. Or what be it? Worst case, you hopefully you're going to walk away with a connection, a yeah. LinkedIn connection, and networking is starting. Your network is starting to grow. Yes. So it's it's important to to do that and to talk to people and get comfortable. Yes, absolutely. What have you noticed, um, or what what are some things that you've noticed that transitioning service members do wrong with virtual career fairs? I, I this is going to sound again. I'll generalize a little bit with virtual and regular career fairs. They believe everyone, mm. right, and. and Part, and that sounds horrible. I don't want I don't want a service member thinking that they can't believe anyone. Sure. But 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 it goes back to what I was saying before with everybody's coming at you from a different multiple directions, and you're going to get a hundred different viewpoints on well, this is how you should have written your resume, and this is what you should have said, and you should do this, and you should do that. So you've shown up to a career fair to try to learn more about companies and, and different 
opportunities that they have and you walk away with a, a long list of you should haves. Yep. Oh, okay, well, great. Uh, my tap class told me this. I think I did that. And now the company's telling me something different. Right. <laughs> what the hell do I believe? <laughs> you know, so, and, and that's where you have to be as a, and this is where I start to shine the light back to the company to say, you have to be honest and transparent. And that's why I always ask the service member, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? Generally, what do you want to do is I don't know. And right. that almost is the right answer. It should yeah. be, I don't know. Right. Where you want to go is almost always, 90% of the time, I don't care. Right. Wherever I've lived out of a bag for 20 years. Or the other side of it is I'm going to go home to home. Minneapolis with and live with my wife. Mm -hmm. right? that, and that's totally acceptable. Right. Because then it allows me as the company to tell you, hey, look, man, I got nothing for you in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. I can't help you. However, I know a guy. Let me help you. Right? I want to help you. I want to network with you because I will tell you, me and 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 my other brethren, veterans in GD, are all alike. I don't. I want every one of you to come work for me, mm -hmm. but I don't care. What I care about is helping you as a veteran get somewhere and get landed. Yes. Yes, I want you to work for me. Yes, that's the selfish component, <laughs> but. The, but the more bigger selfish component is I want to help you. I want to yes. help you and I want to help your family and I want to get you comfortable, get you out of the military, get you landed somewhere and let, let make you feel comfortable. That's right. more important than anything to me. So it is so important. we're all here to help. And, and it's hard because we as veterans don't ask for help. We got it. We'll handle it all, all the yep. time. I'm not going to ask anybody. Like you said, your friend, you, you know, you called, you called her out. If you ever want to help, you know, ask. Yeah. We, we don't need accolades and, and we think a lot we don't need help, but sometimes you need someone to just a sounding board. Yes. And you just bounce it off of me. You know, I've, I've been in your shoes. I've done it. Use me as a sounding board. So exactly. uh, that's a very long drawn out answer to, to number three. But um, I, I think that what I would say is the short answer is don't believe everything you hear. Ask questions of people that you can trust and don't be afraid to ask a lot of people. It, it's important. Yep. And the other knowledge. thing I would say, I've noticed that, that they're doing wrong, uh, <clears throat> not in a timely fashion. Get on LinkedIn, start beefing up your network as soon as you can. And link in with a lot of people. As you talk to people at, at job fairs, get the business card. As soon as you're done there, send them a LinkedIn invite. Start your network. And don't be afraid to tap into it. Oh, my gosh. I can, that, that is so true. Like, my first, my first three jobs after I left out of, the, out of the Army. Now, mind you, they were all in the same field. I was, a, I was a defense contractor. So I would go work for one company. Things kind of go south with that contract. So I would go to the next. So it wasn't like I was job hopping. I pretty much stayed in the same. I was doing pretty much the same thing. But those first three jobs, I had the job before I even applied for the job because I networked. Absolutely. It's, All, I mean, 95% of your jobs are going to be found from networking. That's it. That's and it. anybody that tells you I blindly applied to the last six jobs and got picked, well, Bud, go buy a lottery ticket. Please go buy the lottery ticket. You, 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 that, that is something that just doesn't happen very often. Exactly. You have to, you have to work, you have to work that, that, that network of people because- it's the age old adage of it's not what you know, it's who you know. It's who you know. Exactly. Exactly. And, oh, that's, if there's one piece of advice that whenever someone asks me, because I've, I've had people, you know, over, the, over the last year, you know, just blindly email me because they saw an article that I wrote for GI Jobs. So like, sure. let me email this guy. And I offer, I you know, hey, if you if you have questions, email me here. And so I had this one guy in the Navy. He was actually deployed and he was like, I'm getting out. I, I want to do this. What advice can you give me? I said, you build a network. You need to find people that have done this. You need to find people that have gotten out before you. you maybe you have an old chief that got out of the Navy before you that's, that's doing exactly what you want to do. You need to talk to chief. Because Chief yep. can probably help you more than anyone else. If anything, if Chief can't get you a job, he can at least put you in contact with someone because he may know someone. But work, you got to work that network. 
that's it. Ask five people that you know for help or someone that they know, and all of a sudden, boom, you just reached out to, you know, 25, 50, 150 people. The door is open. I mean, they literally open for you. You, you can't, people don't do it enough, and, and it sounds like a plea, but it's not. If you ask another human being for help, they're not going to tell you no. Right, right. They're Especially veterans. <laughs> reach out and ask another veteran for help yeah no one's gonna say no right it, it's it, it's I, I still kind of hold on to that the old nc the nco in me that says okay troop needs help i gotta help troop and absolutely it, it just it's i don't know it just comes naturally like if i get an email just blindly i've never met, met this kid before ever in my life but i look at it as like oh sergeant payton needs to help step in and help this troop because this troop has questions, it, it just, I don't know, it's just, it's ingrained in me. It goes back to that whole- I can't describe it. I, I, today, my inbox fills up with people asking me questions about SkillBridge. Yeah. And it's like, every everyone, I got to get right back to them. Oh right. my God. No. Yeah. It's like, it's an obligation. <laughs> yes. hundred percent agree. I just, I can't stop. You know, I can't not respond to that person. It's, it, it's, oh man. Okay. Right. Let's, let's keep going. I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, man, this is such a good conversation. Good. Oh, what would you, if, if there's something that, that, a, that a veteran can do as they attend these career fairs to stand out, what can they do to stand out among the crowd? Honesty and transparency and don't be afraid to parlay your military experience. Mm. Hopefully you've already asked the question who you're talking to. So you know, you're talking to a veteran. Yeah. So, so tell me what you did parlay. Hey, I was an 11 bang, bang. I jumped out of airplanes and I was a gunfighter. I don't know what I can do. Right. Okay. Let's right. talk about what you bring to the table. Yes. Attention to detail, leadership, management. I mean, there's 15 other acronyms and, and, and adjectives I can put on that 11 Bravo, but yep. they don't, they are not comfortable with it. And it takes somebody like me to help them transpose that essentially and pull it out of them. So you know, what I, what I drives me nuts, honestly, as a recruiter, and I'm being a little honest, but that's, that's me, is when a veteran shows up at my table or in my virtual booth and wants to try to be someone else. Mm. Just be yourself. Just be, Just yourself. be you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. They try, to, they try to pull off the, well, I did this, you know, and I... And I did this thing in Iraq and I did this thing in Afghanistan. It's like, okay, tell me who you are really. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, you get the, the supply chief or the supply sergeant that, well, I was responsible for the management and logistics for a $74 billion operation. Right. Okay, no, you weren't. No. No, you, you weren't. You, you had $74 billion in equipment yeah. that you were a part of, right. but it took 75 people to move that equipment from point A to point B. They're, and yeah, and now yeah. you're trying to blow up yourself, and you're not that person. Right? And, it's, and and you know you know where that comes from. That comes from the culture in the army. You know that. So when the NCO gets that NCOER, that's all the NCOER ever has been. Is they oh okay yep. well, I I was responsible for this little bit of thing, but they have to blow it up because promotions depend on that NCOER. Right, so, you, you loaded a battery onto a railhead, moved it, and now all of a sudden you're in charge of everything from a, right. from a cost value. Right, it's, it's, it's oh, Ed Dragon. I mean, I, I, I honestly expect it. Uh, so when I go to Service Academy Career Conference, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with that show or not. No, I'm not. What, what so Service Academy Career Conference, is a, it's a national job fair. Uh, they do, I think, four events a year, and it's only open to Service Academy graduates okay okay so everybody there is west point west or airport point, academy airport. Or, yeah. that's where i expect the uh, transitioning 05 06 to walk up and say i can run your company well no sir you can't you can't because you don't know anything about what i do and because you're an 05 and you graduated from the academy does not make you an automatic vice president nope nope and that's that's the stuff and I, and I will, I'll be hundred percent honest. I see less of it at the enlisted level mm -hmm. because you see more of the, I don't, I don't know what I am. I don't know what I'm worth. I don't know what I can do mm -hmm. versus the polar opposite at the 05 level that says I'm your next president. Right. Well, 
No, I, no. I doubt it. But maybe, <laughs> but maybe, I guess. Right? Um, and, and it's just, it's two different games, right? Mm. And, and I, it's, it's almost, you take the 03, 03, 04 and slide them over to the enlisted category a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's the 05 and, and up that gets a little bit different. But, you know, what I don't want to see, I don't want to see any veteran try to be somebody they're not. Don't, don't try to make it up. Don't try to pretend that you've transitioned and you're using all these corporate buzzwords that you don't even really know what they mean. <laughs> just be you, right? Don't, don't, just don't stop. <laughs> yeah, I like, I'm going to put that just be you. It is, it is, oh man. I could imagine some of the things that, that, that come across your way when it comes to. Oh God, it, comes it's, to it can be bad. <laughs> It, it can be really bad. And, and, it, and it's really, you know, the, the what do you want to see and what don't you want to see is almost the same answer, right? It's, it's just be you. Just yeah. be you. Let's be honest, honest and let's have a, a veteran to veteran or person to person conversation that helps you take the next step in your career. Whether that's getting ready for the next interview, just be you. Let's be human about this. That's, oh man, you're throwing out a lot of gems. <laughs> out a lot of gems. It's going to be, I think I got to keep this down to like 700 words. It's going to be tough for me to keep this to 700 words because <laughs> you're throwing out a lot of good stuff. I, I got to give you shorter answers. <laughs> no, you're good. No, no, absolutely. Give me, give me all of it. That way I can, it, 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 it will make it easier to write it and I'll just have to condense it down from there. That's, that's how I have to approach it. I have to, write everything that I want to say and then condense it from there. This is kind of sure. how I, how You'll I have to send me a copy when you're done. I will absolutely send you a copy because it's supposed to be the, the cover story for March. If I'm oh, fantastic. Mistaken. So I, I definitely, it, I have to write it by the 22nd. I'm, they're going to edit it. So whenever that issue comes out, I'm sure, um, I think it's March, they said that this would be the cover. Cool. I will absolutely send you the link to, to the article um, so that you can see it. That'd be good. I'd like to use it here with uh, with our new hires here that are veterans. We handed out an orientation. Absolutely. A couple more questions, and then I think we'll be able to wrap it up. Do's and sure. don'ts. What are some of the do? I think we you you kind of already touched on a lot of things to do and a lot of things not to do. But if you could hone it in on on maybe two specific things that they you don't do at a virtual career fair and things that you do at a virtual career fair. So let's, so don't do, definitely don't try to be someone else, right? We've yep. got that one covered yep. and do is try to be yourself for sure. Be human about it. Yep. Um, the, the, the other do is don't be afraid to ask next steps. Mm -hmm. You know, here I've shown up, I've talked to you, you've looked at my resume. What happens from here? What is the next steps? I'm not completely familiar with how this is all going to work. And again, going down the same road of honesty and transparency honesty. What should I expect next? Yeah, because a lot of people don't know what to expect. So uh, I always did that. I always asked, like, okay, well, you know, what's even if it was an interview for a job that I, you know, pretty much had in the bag, I, I would always ask, and I still do to this day, what's next? What's the next step? What can I expect? You know, can I expect to, you know, to hear from you in a, you know, in a week or? you know, give me details so that I, I leave here with information that I can act on if I need to, if I need to send you a welcome email, I mean, not welcome, a, a thank you email tomorrow, or if I need to not worry about it because you've already made your mind up, and you, you know, whatever the case may be, give me information so that I know how to act. Right, and that, and that just goes along the, the lines of it's going to help quell you and calm you down a little bit because you know what the, yep. next, the next phase of the operation is. Yep. And understanding that's how we all work. The, yep. the, and, and along those lines, the one thing to don't do is to badger and harass the person that whose contact information you have. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, so, and, and badger might be the wrong word, um, yeah. but I think you know where I'm going. Yep. What happens a lot is once, once candidates get that information it's like an email a week or a phone call every week what's going on now what's going on now what about yeah. now and there's just so many things happening that you don't you can you can work yourself out of your candidacy you by be. being 
too eager. Sure can. So that, that would be some very simple do's and don'ts for, for me. Those are great. The, the, the one about don't hound the don't hound them after the fact, that one is yeah, that one <laughs> that's a good one. That one happens a lot. <laughs> All right, so last question, and if you could round it out to any last bit of advice to private, snuffy, petty officer whoever that person is, Colonel even, what last bit of advice can you offer them as they are attending a career fair or even after? We can even talk about after a career fair, what, you know, what, what bit of advice you have? Uh, like we said before, you know, 10 asterisks on it, put it in gold, underline it, bold it, color it red, whatever you want, but network. Network. Network, network, network. You have got to build your network utilize your network, massage your network, consistently build your network. Don't ever stop. This is the thing that got you through in the military is your network. You've gotten out of the military. You're going to carry your military network with you. And now you just get to build it. And, and you have to consistently build the network for your whole world, your whole life. Yes. How often every day do we ask, do you know a plumber? Do you know a carpenter? Do you know an auto mechanic? That's your network. That's your network. It's, you talk about it every day and it it's the one thing that you i, I can tell you that I, I don't even know when it started but i am passionate about my network and who is in it and who's not in it but i every day am using it and every day i'm, I'm expanding it and that only will help you i'll take my wife her last four jobs have been because of my network mm -hmm. same thing she didn't she didn't apply and blindly get them. She got them from my network. Yep. That's okay. Yeah. Right? It's who you know. She knows me. I know someone else. She's got a new job. So I, I guess, you know, the one bit of advice, you know, along with networking, again, is, is transparency. Go in, whether it's a regular career fair, it's a virtual career fair, be you, be honest, know your resume, know your experience, ask questions and network. Yep. If you can do those five or six things, at the end of the day, you're gonna walk out of the event, whether it's virtual or in person, you're gonna feel good about what you did, you're gonna feel great about the people you met, and you're gonna feel fantastic about the momentum that you have moving into the next phase of your life. Yep. Versus coming out of there with you know, all the chaff, surrounding you going yes. oh this is even worse now what, what do i do now yes no yep. so it's it's important there's a lot going on for veterans in their transition and there is a lot of people out there that just want to help yeah. uh, but it's it's again trying to navigate through those wickets and i tell you it's almost like reverse basic training it is when you get off that cattle car right and they're in your face and there's so much going on upstairs. You're just trying to survive. And now it's, you're going the other direction. Yep. <laughs> I like that. Reverse basic training. That is, that is so true. Because it's, yeah, it's pretty much inverted. Because when you get, like, when you get there, oh, man, it's, it's, it's information overload. Yeah. I but mean, if you could just, just put those four or five drill sergeants in business suits and every one of them is barking, start your own business, invest in this, go same here, thing. go there, do this. It's the same thing. Yeah. And, and it's just the opposite direction. Yes. Oh man. That, that's a good one. I'm putting that in my notes. First basic training. Oh man, this has been, this has been a really good, really good conversation. I, I like I said, I'm going to talk to the editor and see if there's, I'm probably gonna tap. I'm gonna probably tap you for a few more things over the course of the year. Um, different, no, no problem. Different I, I, as, yeah. as I said, I am happy to help. Whatever you need, happy to. This this has been great. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, I guess I got to get back to my day job now. <laughs> <laughs> you got to check the plumbing leak. Is what you got to check. Yeah, yeah. I got to go make sure the house didn't flood. But uh, I, like I said, appreciate you taking the time. This was great. And uh, whenever this does publish, I'll make sure I send you the link. That'd be great, James. I appreciate the time and uh, let me know what I can do. I'm happy to help.
Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Thanks. You too. Take care, man. All right. Bye.